Hey guys, RC Anime here. Today, I want to talk about a topic that I know everyone's familiar with. We've all seen it done countless times before, and it's something we probably don't pay much attention to because of that. Camera movement. One of the best ways to make a scene stand out is to have the camera move. It's an indispensable feature to filmmaking, and I don't think there's a single director who hasn't done it. Of course, we're talking about anime, so technically there is no camera. But for the sake of argument, let's just say there is in order to understand how this technique works. Because like anything else, it's important to know when and when not to use it. And when you do do it, how and where are you moving the camera? And what does that movement have to do with the story? So I point us to one director who seems to have it all down for the most part. Mamoru Hosoda. What's important about Hosoda is that he tends to avoid camera movements whenever possible. Most of his shots are stationary, where either the backgrounds or the characters take center stage. This is why whenever he moves the camera, the effect of whatever he's trying to do just feels bigger. More than too many films these days include camera movements into scenes for no actual reason. This overdone shaky cam is just distracting. Maybe. The most important thing to know first is that if your camera movement doesn't carry any emotion or reflect the scene in any way, it's probably better to do without it. Many shots can carry double the impact when the camera is just stationary, and all we get to see are the little things. It's really these simple actions, or lack of, that can really make the characters much more sympathetic. Hosoda knows this, and he's given this treatment to some of his best sentimental scenes ranging from scenes where love blooms, to ones where it departs. These stationary shots work so well because it gives us an objective view of the events unfolding before us. No matter how much we might want to be with the characters, we're never able to. If you want to do the opposite, that's where camera movement comes in. Be it a zoom, a pan, a tilt, or anything else, these are the shots that are used not to sympathize, but to empathize with the characters. This is Hasoda's basic guideline, but what questions does he ask to know when to add it? For starters, how does the movement relate to the character? Let's be honest, stories are about characters. It doesn't matter if your character is a person or someone from Zootopia. The important thing is for a film to understand its characters and be aware of them. One of the best ways to do that is to mirror their emotions by moving the camera. The character can be frantic or quietly losing their composure. But what I always find more interesting and unique in films is using the camera to bring out a character's personality. This shot alone lets us know exactly what kind of a person Makoto is. The camera challenges her, but her resilient and stubborn nature clearly wins the game. Second is, how does the movement reflect the mood of a scene? The motive of any scene is to get the point across. There is always something there for the audience to emotionally react to. And camera movements are an easy way to convey different moods. You can have a slow foreboding zoom, track an early morning rush, follow a panicking POV, or deliver one of the greatest scenes of all time. This might be bold to say, but I think human emotion is universal. Certain shots tagged with certain contexts inherently carry specific pathos. お客さんにもその日本以外のお客さんにも何かこう伝わってくれるものがあるとそれは僕らが日本で生きてるその生きて感じてる気持ちっていうのが要は僕らだけのものじゃなくて要するにその日本以外のあらゆる人たちに共通
When you want to give a scene a particular emotion, what you normally do is give the camera a particular movement. Lateral tracking shots are normally best for either conveying the sense of time passing, or to introduce a character into a scene more dramatically. And using it beyond its normal use can sometimes feel a bit awkward, and a little gimmicky almost. Remember, in film, the world is solely limited to what we see in the frame. Sure, there are things happening beyond it that can affect the story. But if you really want to play with these elements, sometimes camera movement can offer an interesting narrative. Which leads us to the final question. How does it play with the world? In live action films, a lot of directors move the camera around so we can see the space the actors are acting in. In animation, the space isn't limited to any physical restrictions. Therefore, you can really play around. If a character is feeling hopeless, you can show them achingly running towards nothing. Or if everyone has suffered a loss, you can slowly track across what looks like a melancholic painting. Now I want to make it clear that none of this is revolutionary. But there's a sense of modesty when Hasoda does it, because his direction never really calls attention to itself. After all, he rarely moves the camera, only saving it for the big moments. There are plenty of good films in anime that use a ton of camera movements, but when they do do it, there's still usually an emotional resonance to them. But Hasoda's a minimalist, and I think that's one of his greatest strengths as a filmmaker. ね、so the next time you notice a filmmaker move the camera, ask yourself if the movement is motivated and if you get any sort of emotion from it. Because what else are films for? <laughs> Oh,